Hey Dominic, we've got some news. Yes, that's right. We released Flynn 2.0, right? A big Woohoo. version update. Ooh. How long was it to, to get it done, Stefan? Oh, it's been years. Like literally, I think we started working on Flint version 2.0 in 20, end of 2020. I think kind of like that's when we, I think, uh, released the previous version, latest one, and then we started working on it and we went through a couple of iterations. Finally, we ended up with a couple of key topics that we wanted to focus on on this release. And these are performance, editor experience and developer experience. So let's talk about the uh, main features here and advancements in performance. I think the most noteworthy thing to highlight is that we're getting a full 100 out of 100 in the page speed test results, which I think is very amazing. And we even included a button to test it yourself on the website. So just click that and you will be able to verify yourself if that's actually true. And what did have the biggest impact on achieving this in the performance, Dominic? Yeah, so the biggest impact was actually getting down the JavaScript bundle size, right? This uh, is pretty tricky uh, to do, but there have been a lot of like developments and like in the JavaScript ecosystem and so on, and uh, focusing on, especially on JavaScript boot up time or start time has led to a uh, a concept of like partial hydration or islands, which we implemented with a custom element that we use to initialize or instantiate like all of the JavaScript that is needed on a page. And we have like some hints there, like usually by default, we load all the JavaScript on like only if a component is visible in the viewport, right? But you can have like client hints to, to say you want to load it on idle. That means like when the page has loaded and the uh, and JavaScript script is not blocking the main thread then we have the onload actually this is the default because we didn't want to change anything to the existing behavior but mostly all of our <laughs> components that we code ourselves use the um, load on visible attribute or directive and uh, load on load just means load immediately when the page loads right and then we have like uh, another attribute which is load on media that means you can selectively tell it to load a script file only when a certain media query is met right this actually means so we we break up our uh, main bundle into smaller pieces like for each individual component we have a separate javascript file that is only loaded when this condition inside of the um, wrapper uh, element like this flint component is met like this can be used for anything mainly and this is uh, this has led to dramatic uh, javascript performance improvements and the nice thing is also that it scales really well right it doesn't really matter how many components you have on a page if you only load those that are in the viewport right and there are never that many components that you load where you have like the on load directive because this is usually only for like maybe tracking scripts or the menu or things like that that really need to um, load no matter where you are on a page. Yeah, right. And so this actually happens, for example, with a slider. Like when you have a slider component on your page, then the JavaScript only loads and initializes once you scroll it into viewport. But it happens so quickly that it's actually seamless. Like you shouldn't be able to notice that this is happening. And this is really great, right? This really speeds up the whole loading time and the experience so much. So I really I love that. And I think that's a great concept. And I also like the implementation that you came up with. So I think that's it about performance, the most, most noteworthy thing. Then let's talk about editor experience. One thing that we did also in terms of editor experience is we finally added support for Gutenberg. So specifically for WordPress posts, you will now by default have the Gutenberg block editor. Uh, we, we think this is the great experience, especially for editing long copy. What we also did is we automatically integrated editor styles. So these will be generated from the base style that you create with Flint. And it uh, yeah will just look like the real thing in the front end. You can use all kinds of blocks by default. And you can also, of course, make a more narrow selection of blocks that you want to support. But these aren't Flint or ACF blocks. It's just like default, good back out of the box. When it comes to editing 
regular layouted pages. We still stick to the ACF flexible content field and um, there you will have a new feature as well, the search feature for the component selection. So there I can now search for image and we, it will show me all the image components that I have, making it quicker and easier to drag and drop new components into a page layout. That's it about the editor experience. Dominic, would you like to talk more about the developer experience enhancements? Okay, so yeah, we've done a, we've put a lot of thought into uh, development uh, or developer experience and also try to like get the, follow the latest trends in, uh, in the JavaScript world. While we haven't uh, switched to TypeScript, which usually everyone does uh, nowadays when they develop uh, a new project, we have at least gotten rid of jQuery. <laughs> so that's a big thing we have not only gotten rid of jquery we've also gotten rid of our standard approach on how to write components javascript component scripts before we always had like custom elements for each like component now we are only uh we have like a wrapper custom element for these uh partial uh, loading for for these islands but a component itself is just a, a javascript function kind of we export a default function and in there we have some helpers to help you do like yeah stuff that you need in the front end and while before you had a lot of boilerplate that you had to write always like um, defining a new custom element registering it in the custom element registry also we uh, n before we needed to have a polyfill for the built-in uh, custom elements in safari um, now we don't need that anymore and so this has gotten a lot slicker uh, or, or slimmer uh, let's say so for example here we have the um, slider images component that comes with the free version of lint and uh, you can see we are only exporting a default function that takes an element as an argument right so that is the element uh, uh, kind of as it was before with like what's upgraded as like a custom element now we just have a dom element here so we have uh, something to scope all of our um, javascript to kind of right then um, we have these uh, helper functions we have helper functions for building refs and for uh, uh, getting the JSON. Building refs is like a thing where um, we um, kind of lazily have a, an accessor for DOM attributes, right? So in the uh, Twig uh, or template file, you can say here, let's see, data minus ref and then give it a name right so uh, data ref pref and data ref next and then um, when you say build refs in the function here it will create an object that once you access the refs dot pref or ref dot next it gets the element from the dom so there's no like as we did before with jquery like parsing of the entire element at the beginning but it only par like uh, uh, searches this element once you access it right so uh, here you have like these calls to ref.next and ref.pref. Then getting the JSON it was also something uh, um, that we do quite often. Um, we have a um, script tag of type application JSON in the component, and that's where all of the data for the component lives that we pass from the server, right? So again, if we look at the index twig here at the top, we uh, have the um, JSON data that comes from our uh, PHP render at component data um, filter. And yeah, this way you can easily access that with a helper function. And uh, here, uh, then we initialize the slider. That's just like some uh, swiper code. And we have a the returned function from this uh, default function is a cleanup function, right? So whenever this element gets taken out of the DOM or uh, uh, destroyed, we we will uh, call this function that you pass in here. So in this case, whenever this element gets removed, we call swiper destroy for cleaning up. Like this is useful for like, if you set intervals or uh, timeouts or things like that, that or um, bind events to DOM elements that you can uh, just um, call that whenever you need the cleanup. Yeah, so this is a bit about the component structure. And uh, then one, one other part is the uh, theme JSON where we have integrated. Uh, so we disable basically most of the functionality 
for setting colors for doing or manipulating the uh, the layout and so on but um, and, and then we add our custom properties that we define in our base style sheet here for the content size and the um, white size for example and also we um, use our flow spacing property for the block gap the padding uh, like our container spacing for the padding and this can be extended this probably will be extended in the future uh, this is just uh, to give you a head start and uh, to have the most basic things covered and we are also using Vite instead of Webpack for our uh, bundling. And this has drastically reduced the configuration that is needed. So it's like really a, a simple simple configuration file that most people should understand that, that have uh, touched Vite uh, before. And we have our own little plugin that does like some loading uh, of, of the assets. And we also had to rewrite a little bit how assets get, load, get loaded because in Vite you don't write the uh, assets to, in dev mode to the uh, disk anymore but they are just uh, in memory and are served by a external web server. But still like this uh, has increased the boot up time, the build time, the hot reload time and so on. So this is really, really nice for most developers. With that, we also dropped IE11 support. While it is still possible to do that with like a legacy plugin for Vite and making like a few minor changes. Yeah, we have dropped it for our code bases. And one of the main reasons why we did that was also like the CSS custom properties right because custom properties are not and and like there is so much like css stuff and so many concepts uh, that are not supported by ie anymore and the usage has gone down a lot so and um to give you an impression on what these custom properties look like so we still use scss and we still in some cases use scss variables so for most colors and like other things, we have now real custom properties in CSS that you can also modify at uh, at runtime, kind of like in the browser. You can see that. And here you see that we mix these uh, SAS variables um, and the uh, custom properties. But all in all, we have now a much leaner and more modern code base in CSS, in JavaScript. And yeah, the, the PHP side didn't change so much i think but other than that there have been lots of improvements that will make your daily life just a bit more modern a bit easier yeah right i think that's it uh, what's uh, uh new about flint version 2.0 if you do have any questions please go to the github discussions uh, and open uh, a new topic there and um, let us know if you have any feedback check it out and uh, we hope hope you will have a great experience with the new flint version and i'm looking forward to your feedback and contributions <laughs> <laughs>